Welcome to CJK, David Wake, Gorex, and I'm here playing High Hand. This is a game that me and my friend James have been developing over the last few days, and we think at this point it is ready to be debuted at Quest. So the rules for this game are pretty simple. Uh, each player starts with three coins in the main pot, which is the hexagon, and then you, each player is also given out uh, three cards each. Now that small circle at the top is the side pot. That doesn't come into play just yet. Uh, you'll see us use that in a minute though. So each player flips their cards and reveals the uh, the armies that they're working with. So Ravina and Dragons on my side. Dragons have one point and this switch card, the Infinity logo, basically means that I can take one of James's two lowest cards, in this case that's Ravina, or the Goats, uh, rank 3 and rank 2. I can't take his highest ranking card, which is the Order, that's rank 6. So in this case I've got such a low hand I may as well take his highest card possible trying to beef up my army and then James is given another card. Now in this case the fairy card or infinity card did actually work in James's favour giving him another 6 in the order. I don't think I'm going to be able to beat him. I can put a coin in either the uh, side pot and the main pot or I can choose to forfeit. Uh, in this case being so low I don't think I'll be able to defeat him in two rolls so I forfeit my hand. So James collects my three diamonds and collects them and puts them into his pot. So he now has uh, the upper hand. So at this point, when it comes to picking who goes first, generally it's the person with the less coins or the lowest amount in their army. So each player is then again given out three cards and you flip them. Now I've ended up with the exact same hand on this one. Uh, but I've got the switch card, so in this case I'm going to choose to swap it for his free company, which is rank 5, uh, leaving him with a new card, which is the White Bulls, which is rank 10, because I'm awesome like that. So he's now sitting on a comfortable 18, while I'm sitting on 9. Uh, so at this stage, James is winning. So if I want to try and beat him, I need to gamble and put forward a gem in both the main and the side pot and then I get to roll this beautiful polystyrene dice that we made because we couldn't find a real dice. Uh, so I just throw that and I add the total that it comes to to my army's total. Uh, so at this stage still James is beating me um, so I need to, if I want to, re-gamble and put two gems this time in both sides of the pot. Uh, so the side pot will gain uh, more and more gems as we go. Again, I didn't beat James, so at this stage the side pot stays there and he collects all the money that I was willing to gamble to try and beat him. So shuffling the deck isn't all that important really. I can't remember where the cards go and I don't put them in in any order at top or bottom. I just slap them in there and just dilly dally around until it's all shuffled up. So again three cards given out to each player and then you flip them and you get your totals. So I'm sitting on a nice score here. Uh, so that's a total of 25 uh, which is the highest that you can get. If you exceed 25 you bust out. So we have to stay at 25, I can't roll the dice, so James has the option to gamble and roll the dice. But sitting on where he is at the moment, it's not the best option. Uh, he's sitting on a total of 8 with the Order and 2 sets of Dragon. But he rolls just for the fun of it, uh, just to sort of show it off in the video, rolls the dice and gets himself to a total of 14. So in this case James decides to gamble further and put 2 coins in both the main pot and the side pot rolling the dice and gets himself to a total of 20. Uh, in this case that doesn't beat my army, I'm still sitting on a score of 25. I don't need to roll the dice, if I do I would just bust out anyway. So I may as well just collect his coins and add them in to my purse. So again we dish out 3 cards per player and we've got our 3 coins in the main pot. So flipping them brings me to a total of 10, James to a total of 9. So James is going to gamble, put a gem in both the main and the side pot, and roll the dice in hopes to defeat me. Now in this case it brings him to a total of 11, so that makes me the lowest, so I'll then roll the dice by putting in one gem in both the main and the side pot. 
roll the dice, and that brings me to 15. So now I've overtaken James again. So James gambles two gems in both the main and the side pot. And he needs to get higher than 15 at this stage to beat me. So he's sitting on 16 now. So that again overtakes me by one. Now all I need to do is roll a two or higher to win this. So I think that's a safe bet. So I'm happy to put in the extra two coins in the side pot uh, to take the coins that he's put in. So in this case, I do decide that I think it's worth it to take his six gems. So I'll place two coins in both, and then I roll the dice, defeating James and collecting his gems that he gambled out. Now, me and James are pretty competitive. We both really want that side pot. It's quite good looking right now. Uh, we do get higher than that, though. It does grow really quickly, so... You do really want to sort of land on that 21 and get that side pot. So again, three cards dished out per player. Three gems in the main pot, and you flip. So James is sitting on a really good hand at the moment, and I'm trailing by a fair few. Now this is where a decision comes in whether or not I think I can beat James. Uh, so at this stage, I've got no hope of beating that on a roll, so I think I may as well just forfeit. Um, and that would be the smartest thing to do, because he's just going to end up taking any coin that I gamble. But for the hell of the video, let's gamble. Um, so at this stage, that brings me to a total of 20. So James still sitting on 25. I'm not going to be able to beat him in the next roll. I can put two gems in the main and the side pots. But in this case, it's not worth it. Uh, if I roll a 6, I bust. If I roll anything less than a 5, I lose. So in this case, I give James all those gems that I was silly enough to gamble. And then we reshuffle the deck. So again, we dish out 3 coins. And we dish out 3 cards. And at this stage, we flipped them. That brings me to a total of 17, but James has a switch card, so he's got 6, bringing him to a total of 12 by stealing my 6. That card goes back in the deck, and that brings me to a total of 18. So James gambles, gets himself to 17, not enough to beat me, so he has to gamble another 2 gems in both main and side pot, rolling the dice. Brings him to 19, so we're equal. All I need to do is basically roll anything, and I win. There we go. Roll, and I get a 6. Winning the game is enough. So James gives me all of his gems. Simple as that. So in the situation where you don't have enough money to buy into the main pot, you can rebuy in uh, to the game with an extra coin. You can't put it into the side pot unless you choose to walk away. So in this case, James decides that he may as well just buy back in because we have unlimited money. Uh, so one coin will get you 15 gems on your second buy-in uh, instead of the original two coins to get 15, and then we redish out the cards. So three gems to buy in, and we flip the cards. And... That's a rare thing that actually happens. Uh, you do hit 21 on the first go. Three card 21 is how you win the side pot. Uh, so at this stage, I win automatically. Take the main and the side pot. And that's how you play high hand. There are a few extra rules that we haven't gone over, but um, once you come to the ball camp and play a game, you'll catch on really quickly. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you at Quest. My mind, and then, what's gonna happen? Money, 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 money,